Hello, and welcome to another edition of Omar Vision's Video Game Programming Tutorials. Tonight, I also have a guest speaker, Grace. Hello. Who's just going to be the person I'm imagining um, showing how to do this. What we're going to do tonight is we're going to do a voxel uh, terrain world kind of coding thing so we could make something like this. We could have the code to make something like this. Yeah, very pretty with many hours of work. But otherwise, I'm just going to run this program, this game program right now. And what it starts off with is it gives us a cube. Um, and this cube is what I'm calling a voxel. And then I could click and I could add more cubes. It's like creative mode, but with clicking. Create, creative mode of Minecraft, right. Like clicking and adding some stuff. Or unclick to take it away. And the other thing is I could change the texture. So I could press 2. And for number 2, I get grass texture. And for 3, I get like a stone texture. And 4 is a uh, bark. Roof! Roof! No, bark like a tree. Bark. And 5 is going to be, you know. So as I click the numbers, I get different textures. And 6 could be water. Okay? And then, um, well, I also have the code here that shows how we could, you know, move around like this with the mouse when we're playing the game. All right. Mouse so, control. yeah, mouse control. So let's break it down and see how we do this voxel world tutorial. I'm going to leave this up so you can see the mesh there. And basically, when I was pressing different numbers to get different textures, it's something like this is my texture mesh here that I was applying to the voxel thing and each section has a different texture so when I pressed one it was using this picture for the for the texture two three four five right and the idea of a voxel world which you can kind of see is that this whole space is filled with basically um, empty cubes. Empty cubes. Empty that you cube. will fill in. Right, empty cubes. So that's the way the game starts. And there was just one cube on in the middle. And then when I was clicking, I was turning voxels on or off. Okay. Activator. Yep, activator, deactivate. And then with that idea that I could change the texture, it's basically like I could turn voxels on or off in that voxel space with different textures and you know, create whatever image I wanted, which kind of could lead to this with a lot of hours of work, right, Grace? Because right now this, yeah, this doesn't look anything like this yet, but you could see is like I put blocks together in I there. I like the look of that little world example there. Yeah. It was about like a little mm -hmm. I like the trees. I think there's a tiny person in there. So how do we do this? How do we do this? Now comes the hard part to explain this. Well, there's not a lot of files, okay? Yeah, that makes it that makes it look simple. There's not a lot of files, and um, I have one script that I put everything in, and then here in my scene, I have a this started off as an empty game object that I just added, so it had the transform, and then since I'm going to procedurally generate the mesh, I need a mesh filter, a mesh renderer, and I added a mesh collider so I could tell when I click on my mesh, my voxel mesh. And then here, the script, it takes the size of the voxel grid that I wanted. So that 10, 10, 10, that's half the size of the grid. So that means from the middle, it's going to have 10, 10 empty voxels in each direction that it goes out. Okay, so this says how big the, the grid is. That's big enough for us to do our work. So let's take a look at the script, okay? Because we had, we break it down into smaller tasks, the task of generating each voxel on the fly. So a voxel, um, I think we understand now, a voxel is one of these cubes. Yes. Okay, Grace, you understand that? Yes, I understand. <laughs> right. And I said that initially the game started off and there was only one voxel in the game in the, in the center of the grid right there. So... 
I'm definitely going to have to make a voxel grid first. So here in the voxel maker script, when it starts, this is where it comes to start. Um, I get a pointer to the mesh collider right here. And I get a pointer to the camera, which is right here. And what else do I do? And then I init the voxel grid. So the job of this init voxel grid is to, you know, kind of create an array of empty voxels. They're not visual. It's just in memory of my code. I'm going to create an array of empty voxel objects, right? Why do so, you call them voxels instead of just cubes? You know, I just call, I started calling them voxels because I just heard them called voxels on the internet. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but I kind of, I, I would call them a bunch of cubes myself. <laughs> so anyway, here's the, um, I'm going to, I'm going to initiate a voxel array. So the voxel is just the, it's just the, um, a class that I made. Can I see your pointer? My mouse pointer? Yeah. There. <laughs> All right. So I have the, um, basically I go through and I loop through the X from one side to the other. And I have another loop for the Y from the top to the bottom and the Z for the in and in out. So that's my three dimensional. And I get at each of these positions, X, Y's and Z's of the loop. I'm just going to add a new, um, I'm going to get the position and store that of the X, Y, and Z. Because when I'm doing my voxel grid, everything's going to be in positions of one unit. You want a puppy? I'm going to be right back. Oh. All right. Grace will be right back. She's going to get one of the puppies that we have. <clears throat> Alright, so this is going to add to my, um, it's going to make a new voxel for each um, voxel position in this um, imaginary 3D grid that we're making of voxels. I am back now. I'm holding Hamilton. Hi, Hamilton. And then <laughs> you're going to have uh, all those voxels stored into a voxel grid array, okay? And then after we make that empty voxel grid array, we're just going to turn one voxel on in the middle, in the dead center middle at 0, 0, 0. We turn one voxel on, and we set it visible to true. So that we may build off of it. Yes, so that we may build off of it. So this voxel object is something that I made in the script. So let's go to the definition to see what it is. So basically, there's three variables here. So for every voxel that we're kind of creating in our imaginary grid. We just want to know the position of the voxel. Is it 0, 0, 0? Is it, you know, over here in this corner, over here in this corner? And so for any position, we need, we need a, a position for every voxel. And then we need to know if the voxel is going to be visible or not. So we have that variable to say if the voxel is going to be on or if it's going to be off. Okay. And then the third thing that we were storing was what type of material do we use for that voxel? And that's how come I could do some that are dirt. dirt, dirt. Okay. And then here's the constructor. Every class, when I make a new voxel object, the constructor comes here. And I could tell this voxel what's the position, whether it's visible, and what the material is. So it sets all three variables. Okay. And then the voxels are being put into a, a voxel grid. So that's just uh, an array of voxels, or it's like a list of voxels, right? Voxel, voxel. Right, and that's what I call my voxel grid. And now after we make this voxel grid in memory of my script, then I'm going to call this other function called voxels to mesh. In the loving memory of my now dead script. Um. Of my now dead script. And we'll go to definition for that. And here is the function that changes all our data about our voxels, which don't have a visual representation. It's going to turn them all into a visual representation so we can see it in the game. Right? So, um, voxels are, are an idea. a cube. Are a cube. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, first thing, if we're going to draw our voxels in the game, we only want to draw the voxels that are on, right? So the first thing here I do is I use this line, this command over here to just find all the voxels where visible equals true. And this syntax here where I kind of have the array, the list 
object and I say dot find all and then um, V is just one of the V one of the objects in the voxel grid where V dot visible equals true I'm just gonna it's gonna return to me all the voxels in my voxel grid that are tr that are on so now I just have a shorter a shorter list of just the on voxels okay so now I just have to deal with that and I have this other object called data what's this data object this is where I'm gonna hold all my data that I'm gonna give to the mesh so let's go to definition what data is data is a mesh data thing <laughs> that I'm using to hold more information and let's go to the definition of that so the mesh data is this it just holds all the points it holds all the triangles the UV coordinates that says how to draw the texture on it and all the vertices those are all the points of my all the points of my 3d mesh object all these little corners everywhere that's what the vertices are grace is this yes, yes. I'm, listening. I'm not I, I think you're listening I'm just wondering if like it's understandable what's happening here I don't code I know um, but does it make sense all right so if I look at yes I understand like I understand Mm -hmm. that what each of these things is doing i just will never understand how a computer sense okay all that jibbery jab jibbery jab yeah so I'm um not a computer i'm a person anyway so this loop over here this for loop is going to go through and it's going to create the mesh data like the points Where for each of the cubes that are on yeah. okay so this one's off this one's on so first uh here's the current voxel I'm talking about when I'm looping through the on voxels and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see if there's a voxel to the left of the voxel I'm at to the right down up I'm looking to see what neighbors are gonna be there who's my neighbor, who's my neighbor? for the current voxel I'm in do I have a voxel on my left on my right do I have a voxel down below me or up above me and do I have a voxel that's on um, behind me or in front of me because if there's a voxel in front of me right I don't have to draw that that wall I don't have to draw that side so like you see save these your, I could save time and save time same, same. save the amount save the amount of calculations yeah. because like over here see if the this voxel here if there's no voxel over here I kind of have to draw that wall but if there was a voxel right next to it, I don't have to draw that wall it would be invisible. because nobody's going to see that wall anyway. You can't go in. And then your computer program will run faster because you didn't color it in. Thank you, Grace. That's right. So anyway, this this gets me if you know. So what this does here, this command, single or default. So basically, if there's a voxel to the left, that means that the position has to equal my position x minus one and one literally equals one <laughs> and somebody's ringing the bell let me pause this who could that be pause okay so we checked out what was going on at the door right grace and now we're back we have all situations handled all situations handled at the front door now we're going to continue so where were we we were like yeah we just said we made a voxel grid and then we picked a voxel in the middle and we said the visible is true and then we say voxels to mesh voxels to mesh we have to make the data for our mesh and we were about to explain that for each voxel for each cube there are six sides and if you look at like when it's going to be drawn if there was two cubes next to each other you're not going to see these inside walls right so i don't have to draw those walls they will be invisible. They will be invisible, so therefore, why even bother adding them to my mesh? Those I inside want to walls. Save my computer power for better purposes. Yes, save my computer power. So for each voxel, I'm going to do a loop for each of the on voxels, because um, I only have to do this with voxels that are on. I don't have to do it with voxels that are off, because they're not going to draw. So right here, this line finds all the voxels in my voxel grid that visible equals true so now I have less voxels to check through and now this is the loop that's going to go through all the voxels and see 
what walls have to be drawn for each voxel. So to know if I have to draw a wall on the left, right, down or up, in back or in front, I just kind of check in my voxel, my on voxels, I see if there's any on voxel to the left and the right by just using the position to get the one to the left or the right. And if there's a voxel there, then left will equal something. And if there's no voxel there, then left will be null. And that's the same for all the other six sides. So if on the left there is no voxel, I have to draw that wall. And I'm going to call the walls, um, I'm going to call it a quad, because it's basically two triangles that make up a side. Mm -hmm. The quad. Yeah, because when you're making meshes um, in Unity, every mesh has to be made up of triangles. And so, so it looks like cubes, and it yeah. is in fact made of triangles. Thank they you. Have fooled you. They have fooled us. They look like they're really triangles. So each quad takes two triangles at least to make. So we're using two triangles. So a quad, I'm saying to add the data to make a quad on the left, on the right, down, up, back and forward, if there's no voxel there. After I finish going through that array, for every voxel to say what walls I have to draw, you know, like, draw and give the data then i could finally set the mesh so let's see let's go to the set mesh function go to definition and set mesh is right here and set mesh is uh this is actually trying to set the mesh in the unity um inside unity so here on my voxel object the mesh is this the mesh filter has a mesh on it this component right here so I have to get that mesh component first and make sure I have a value for it. So that's right here. So if my mesh variable right here is null, that means I didn't get a pointer yet. So this is important because if I'm running the game here in Unity, I don't want to have a memory leak. So I have to check to see if I'm running the game in Unity or, or the game's running for real like a like an executable by itself so first i get a pointer to the mesh filter um which is this like i said and then if the application if unity is in the editor mode then i'm going to use the mesh filter shared mesh okay and if the mesh filter shared mesh is null then i'm just going to make a new mesh there and of course, this is going to be an empty mesh with no data yet. And then I set the mesh equal to that. But if Unity is not running, if this is just like the actual game running after we built it, then I could say the mesh equals the actual mesh filter mesh object instead. Okay, so when we go through here, this over here that says none for mesh filter, it's going to equal something. It'll equal a mesh now. But um, the mesh is not going to have any data to say what to draw. So that's what the get mesh does. It sets our mesh variable. And now, with the mesh variable set, we could use it. So first thing we do is we clear out all the data, whether there was data there or not. We clear it out because we're going we're gonna to tell it all the data we want to use. Disappear for a moment there. I was drawing. Oh. <laughs> focus. I am focusing so well. All right. So through these other functions, we already set up, you know, through these um, things over here, I said quad add, quad add. That was making an array of vertices, triangles, and UVs. The vertices are points in 3D space. Those are all the dots in the 3D space. And the triangles were like we said for every quad there's two there's um two triangles so what the triangles are are saying connect the dots for all the triangles like 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 15 17 18 19 all the triangles it connects the dots to make the triangles and for uv it's just saying for every triangle what do i draw on that triangle from the picture that i have as a texture which is this. The UV says, okay, I over here I pick this point to to this point and I put that on this triangle, you know. So basically you want to make sure your square makes some nice triangle setup. Yeah. If you get a backwards square, you'll be sad. 
So from all those things that I calculated, that's in my data object, my data dot vertices. This data thing is a is an object I made up in my script. Now I set the mesh vertices equal to the data vertices. I set the triangles equal, I set the UV equal. So now my mesh over here is not going to be empty. It's going to have all the data. Now, um, one more thing we do with the mesh before we're going to render it is we calculate the normals. And luckily, since that's something you're always going to have to do, you know, the Unity mesh data object has a function called recalculate normals. And a normal, it just, it's like a line that would be coming out from, where'd my picture go? Where? Here it is. No, this one. A normal is like, you see how this side is facing this way? So it's a line that comes out that says, okay, this, this um, quad is facing this way. So when the light shines, it knows how bright or dark to make it. Uh, it's like setting where your sun is. Yeah, it's like setting where your sun is. So this shape, it's just saying that this shape points this way, this shape points this way. And then when the light comes on, it knows how much light to put on there. So in those games where you have one of those awkward shadow spots where there shouldn't be one, they didn't reset their normals. Yeah, they didn't reset their normals. And then the recalculate bounds, this is saying for all the vertices, all the little points, it's basically saying how big is this mesh. So it takes like the, the extents and now it kind of knows how big the mesh is. So it says recalculate bounds. I'm going to check if this microphone works. We are doubting it. Yeah, I don't think it's working. And then um, recalculate tangents, that's for shaders, you know, shader graphs, which is like advanced, but hey, it's there. We don't have to do anything, so call all three of them, and then your mesh will be ready to do stuff. So now the mesh object is set, and it could be rendered, but there's one other thing that needs to know what the mesh object is, and that's our collider, because you see right here it says mesh. Right, so we could detect collisions on our newly made mesh. We got to set the collider's mesh. So that is what I'm doing over here. Mesh collider, shared mesh equals mesh. So now the collider has the mesh too. You must know the meshy mesh. You must know. You must know. Ah, so I think that is... So much mesh. That's everything simply broken down. Okay, to make the mesh. And that's why when we play this game... It comes up and boop. There's one. Beautiful. There's one voxel right dirt here. Block right there. Yeah, there's one beautiful dirt block right there. And if I click, so like what I said, this voxel, it's gonna have all sides drawn. You see, no it's matter where. All alone. Mm -hmm, it's all alone in the world, so every side is drawn. Now give it a friend. Now give it a friend. If I give it a friend on this side, let's give it with a different texture. There. Now that means okay. Let's look in its soul. Well, you don't see, you don't see anything. You can't see anything on the inside because the inside's not rendered. And that's exactly how we save time when this game is running, right, Grace? Yeah. It's like so. The wall for this dirt over here is not. You know, we didn't add a quad for it, and the wall for this grass over here, we didn't add a quad for it either because you're never gonna see it. And that's how we save time. Oh, you want five? I want to see what happens. Okay, five. Oh, that's the leaves. How about three is the rocks. is a rock. A rocky tree. I don't yeah. Know. Okay, well, wait. That's not everything now because let's do the part. That was about how to make the mesh, okay? Um, how come it's working that when I click on something, it adds stuff? How about that? You want to figure that part out now? I bet they do. <laughs> I bet they do. Thank you. I hope they do. I hope they do. So that part is done. Let's let me just shrink everything again. Outlining, collapse the definitions. And here in the update function, um here I see if you press one, two, three, four, and five and six. And based on the keyboard number that you press, I change the current material to dirt, grass, stone, blah blah blah. Okay, that's yeah. explanatory. Then over here, um, this is like if I click the right mouse button mm. on also on the game. How to make them go away by reading the code? I can. Yeah. Yeah. Click with your left mouse button. Yes, the left mouse away. button, and they'll I was go like, away. I made a mess. How do I clean this up? 
And these green things, these are comments. So that it helps you say what the code does. Mm. You know, so. It's I'm like organization. Yeah, you always have to be organized. Code is important when to be organized. Yes, uh. it is. So over here, what happens if I click with the right mouse, it's going to, maybe I should just run this again so we can see. So here's a cube, and I click with the right mouse, it's going to calculate where on the voxel am I hitting. Wait, I want to try something. I'm yeah. going to try and trick it. So if I click, it's so it should go on. Oh, well. It picks a side. It's going to pick a side. Mm -hmm. And then if I left click, it will go, go away. away. Right. Okay, great. How do you rotate again? Oh, um, I have to hold down the Alt key, and now you move your mouse to okay. rotate. Okay. Go again. Okay, rotate. Rotate. Are you going to make an X? I there. was going, wait, now press 2. 2? Okay. <laughs> Grass. I'm smart enough. To Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> there. Rotate. I don't know what I'm doing. All right, so what are you doing? Okay. I'm making art, Dad. I've taken okay. over so I can. Well, if people want to know how I oh, how it knows where you're clicking, though. Well. <laughs> well, I don't care, Dad. I just gotta keep going. All right, I think we got enough for the idea here. Okay, fine. All right. So as you saw, uh, my assistant Grace was clicking on the my voxels. Your sister. No, I said my assistant. Oh. <laughs> was clicking on the voxels and things were popping up. So. Basically, this code here is going to figure out which where you clicked in the scene to know where to add a voxel. So um, then we just do the old screen point to ray conversion trick. Ah, uh, yes. Yes. That well-known trick. That well-known no trick. So that's how come we needed the camera. Because we're going to cast, like, when you click in the, in the game, it, where you are sitting is, like, the screen. And then when you click in the game, that's the point. So from the screen point to ray we're gonna like cast the ray from the camera all the way into the scene so this first makes that ray and then we're gonna see if that ray hits any object in the scene and that's what physics ray cast is it's gonna cast out that ray and if it hits anything it's gonna come out in the hit variable so in the hit variable we'll have the data of what got hit so from that data of what got hit I made a function here to calculate which voxel that is. Your phone's dying, isn't it? It is. <laughs> and then I get the voxel by position. We identify voxels. And now I could, uh, what am I doing here? Now I get, uh, I get that voxel in the voxel grid, you know, with this. So once I have the voxel position, I could, with this command, I see... I get the voxel in that position where the posi position equals that. And if there is a voxel there to do something with, whether it's on or off, I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to set the material to whatever our current material is. And then I call voxels to mesh again. So it draws all the, it recreates the mesh. Lots of conditions. Boom, ba -dum. And the same thing over Lots here. This must be answered in coding. Yeah. You're like, if this happens, do this thing. If that happens, do this other thing. <laughs> Yeah, because there's only a couple of commands in, in code. If and if this happens, do looping that. and stuff like and that. If that does happen, repeat this. <laughs> yeah, it's only a couple of commands. You just got to put them together in order. So um, this thing, get side voxel, it's a couple of commands. So I made a function out of it. So let's go to the get the side voxel. What the heck? Wait, what do you mean you can't find the function? Go to definition. Go to definition. There we go. So here, um, I take that hit information, which is just telling me a, a, a point in 3D space that got hit. And I just convert that hit information. <sighs> First thing I do is I see which voxel did I hit. Did I hit the voxel of position 000, 0001, 111, 101, whatever that position is, I get that voxel. And then I get, when I hit a voxel, I'm hitting one of the quads. Where's that picture again? When I hit a voxel, I'm hitting one of the quads, Grace, right? Quads. Yeah. And the normal... Gracie. I'm listening. The normal tells me which way is facing, which which way that quad is facing, right? So I get the, I get the voxel that was hit. Say I hit this one. 
Then I get the normal of the side that I hit. This one, it's like the normal's pointing this way. And that normal tells me that I want a new voxel on that side. So my new voxel will be over here. And that's what this is doing. This says the side voxel that should come up. All right. And the get hit voxel, that just says for the hit position, tell me if you don't understand any of this. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. Just tell me if you get the general idea of this, because when people I'm get the script, this you trying to be like, if you click this, it will do that to right. place my block. And um, when I'm trying to see which voxel I actually hit, it's basically doing a thing. It uses the normals again. So say I clicked on this wall over here. It's like when I clicked on it, if the normal points this way, that means the voxel is the opposite direction. It's this one. Swapping. It just means that, okay, like, see this side right here? Yes. Yeah, so if the normal it. points this way, the normal says, I'm facing this way, that means when I click on it, the voxel is, if the normal points this it's way, that means it's over here behind the, the normal. Okay. That means I'm clicking on this square, and that's what I did over here to figure that out. And then, whew, you just run through the code and see it. Otherwise, I, if I go step by step through everything, it's going to take too long. I want to save time. We're going to see a movie. Yeah. yeah, we're going to see a movie, so we can't be here forever. Okay. Um, so this is explaining how the clicking works. What else do I have to explain? Should I explain how the camera works when the camera's moving around like this have with the alt? Have you done a video about the camera? Yeah, but not a camera like this. I want to play with the cubes more. Oh. All right, I'm going to do the, the um, camera video real quick. Here's the camera script that I attach to the camera itself. And it basically, it's not even that big a script, you see? So over here, if I scroll the mouse wheel, then I take the scroll and I move in and out. Like I zoom in and out with the mouse wheel. See, that's what I was wondering how to do. I was like, I can't, don't mess see? up my tree. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I'll fix it, hold on, there. So I scroll <laughs> I scroll in and out with the mouse wheel. Little thing going back and forth over oh yeah, you can see the camera getting closer and further. And then the other thing I did for the for the um, when the camera spins around like this, you see how it's going around in a circle? Yeah, that's like that green dot. Is that the focus point? Yeah, the green dot's the focus point. Mm -hmm. So when it goes around in a circle, that's over here. Um, so first, remember how I had to press the Alt key so you could move around first? So here I hold down. If you're holding down the Alt key, then it it looks to see if you move the mouse in the X or the Y. If you move it in the X then it rotates around in the X. If you are moving up and down with your mouse, then it rotates around up and down. Yeah, and that's how the moving the camera thing works. And now, now that my video is concluded, Grace, I'll let you play around and make more shapes. And you can go to, while my assistant Grace is playing around making stuff, Oh. You can go to omarvision.com and go to the tutorials section of the website and you could look up the video there. There's a lot of videos, but you could type search and search for the voxel, search for the word voxel and then, you know, this video should come up and you could right there on the video, you could click on it to get the script and even the project itself if you don't even want to use the scripts where you just want the whole project. And you could play around with this. I'm using the other camera mm -hmm. to know where I'm clicking. Mm -hmm. And then I make the fluffy. I like fluffy trees. Mm -hmm. I miss it. Yeah, it's pretty fluffy. It's so fluffy. These leaves look fluffy, I guess. Yeah. And then I make like a dirt path leading to said tree. This could be like a floating world. How about that? I think that is the goal right you now. You could just make a whole floating world where things are just floating around. So therefore, if you have a character that's going to be walking around in this world, I think they should definitely have wings. <laughs> <laughs> fall off and die. Yeah. Or have wings. Inside. Yeah, otherwise they're going to fall off. You should put grass on that. I'm trying to. Okay. okay. Um... I don't know how long this will take, but you can stop anytime you want. Alright, so Gray's going to keep on playing, and folks, you could uh, keep on playing too.
So this is the end of this video. Any questions or comments, like and subscribe, blah, 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 blah. You know the jail. And talk to you later. Hey, could you press stop then up there? Thanks. I will.